We are very pleased to have Christopher Greaves and Ruth uh, today for our Sahaja Yoga Golden Memories session. And uh, Chris and Ruth, as we uh, address them here in England, in the heart of the universe, um, have been instrumental in in um, starting Sahaja Yoga, laying the um, seeds on the foundation of Sahaja Yoga in the southwest of England. And, and so they're going to talk about uh, how Sahaja Yoga uh, was started there, established there, and, and the process it took, and Srimataji's visits there. So if we start with you, um, uh, Chris, Chris now is uh, Christopher Greaves as an author. He's written several books, working on several projects. And Ruth, his uh, lovely wife, is uh, an artist. She is a craftsperson. She's very talented with uh, the use of her hands. So um, it, it, I'm looking forward to listening to all these stories that you have with Shimataji. So if I could request Chris to please start off what was the journey of seeking for you like? When did you meet Sri Mataji first? What was it all about? Okay, so, I mean, I was always seeking. I mean, that was, I suppose, the fundamental thing in my life, although I didn't necessarily phrase it as, you know, I am a seeker. Um, but I always felt, I mean, it, sound, it can sound egocentric, but it didn't feel like that that I had some task to do in this life, that I wasn't just here to um, waste it or do something frivolous or something materialistic, but there was some purpose and I had to find it and I hoped I would. And um, then <clears throat> how I came to Sahaja Yoga, very briefly, well, it was quite an interesting story. I've told it many times, but uh, there was something a little miraculous about it. I was living in Bristol and I used to take this uh, music paper every week and I was getting to the point where I thought, why do I buy this wretched newspaper? It's, uh, you know, I'm not interested really in the kind of music it was about anymore. I'd moved on. Um, but in the very last uh, issue that I bought, there was a tiny advertisement in the back, a little picture of Sri Mataji saying, uh, that on uh, the 5th of June, this was in 1978, uh, she would grant en masse self-realization at Caxton Hall, London. And um, I sort of, you know, I'm, I was more of a kind of thinker rather than someone who feels his way through life. And I sort of figured out that if there was to be some sort of breakthrough, it had to be something that was individual, self-realization would describe it, but also somehow collective, so en masse would describe it. And this seemed to absolutely be what I was looking for. So, but I was, I'm a person who lives very much in his imagination. So I tend to do things in my imagination and then, kind of look around, wake up and realize that I haven't done them at all, except in fantasy, you know. So what I'm trying to say is to get me to go from Bristol to London to this meeting. I was quite a shy person. You know, what was I going to find and so on? Uh, it was not a straightforward thing, but it's just so happened that some friends were moving to London that very day so I could get a lift with them. I was just... Uh, I was quite young, uh, quite poor. I'd just turned 26 a couple of days before this. And um, now my friends who were going to London were, and the two of the people that I shared a flat with were musicians. And they played together a very nice um, kind of music that was sort of jazzy, but with an Indian touch, instrumental, very mm -hmm. good. Um, and they had been looking for a name. And an old school friend of mine who lived in Bristol 
uh, suggested the name. He was, he was a seeker too. Um, and he found in a book he, he had this name, Sahaja. And uh, so they called um, this band Sahaja and they played around Bristol a few times. And um, But this wasn't mentioned on the advertisement I'd seen in the music paper. It just said on mass self-realization, nothing about Sahaja Yoga. So we got to London uh, and they went off to Holland Park where he was moving. And then they were going to go to a, a jazz gig in the evening. And of course I was drawn, you know, the pool. It's so much easier to just flow along like that rather than to make this yeah. effort to um, go to Caxton Hall. But I went and outside there was this big poster saying Sahaja Yoga. And, you know, obviously this for me was very symbolic. And I thought, yes, this is it. I went in and... Um, Sri Mataji was introduced by Gregoire, who gave a very powerful introduction, which I haven't heard before or since, saying basically who Sri Mataji was. And there were also, um, I mean, who she was spiritually. And there were leaflets on the um, chairs that <clears throat> described her as having been Mary. And I found I'm a very skeptical person skeptical about virtually everything but um this absolutely struck a chord with me i didn't doubt it and uh i i never doubted it at all i just felt yes this is it this is why i'm on this earth and this is um the goddess so uh she told me uh someone took me up at the end she cricked my neck um told me i should get my hair cut which was extremely, really yeah, really. <laughs> she said entities can get in it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, right, I've got to <laughs> cut my hair. I was looking for an excuse to cut it, really. You know what it's like, you grow your, yes. you get used to a hairstyle. <laughs> yeah, a hairstyle, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remind us again, this is 1978 Caxton Hall, summer yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah so <clears throat> I, it was a funny time because this was mm. the time of the punks. And yes. I remember going to a punk gig um, in Bristol and there were a lot of people there and they all had sort of pins through their faces and these uh, kind of plastic clothes with zips everywhere. And, you know, and they looked at me and they all had short hair. You know, they looked at me and said, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> was, what are you? Not who? <laughs> <laughs> it was like that. Um, so, yes, so... I went um, home and I, oh, and also she actually said, there's someone very good in Bristol. And I pictured this sort of old man with a white beard, you know, sort of very <laughs> sage like. <laughs> this is how little I knew. Uh, and it turned, out, <laughs> it turned out to be, he is very good. He's still very good. Um, this is Alan Richards, who is in America now. Mm -hmm. About 21, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was younger than me. <laughs> and uh, he was a student there. And we, we met up, it was quite a while later, few, uh, I think in December or January. Um, but he was quite shy too. So it wasn't that immediately we set about starting meetings, but that happened sometime. Later. Tell us about uh, your meeting with uh, Shrimataji. So Gregoire gave this yeah. absolutely phenomenal introduction, which I can only imagine yes, to a Western audience. And everyone's like, gobsmacked um, uh, yes I mean so the things I remember about that meeting was I'd chosen carefully to sit in the middle of the room because I <laughs> if I sit at the back they might say everyone at the back come <laughs> forward there's lots of space <laughs> and I was keen to be an anonymous and um, didn't work <laughs> <laughs> but actually I mean the first thing I remember was that she magically gave her talk and said right you put your hands towards me and immediately this chap in the front row stood up and said why do we have to do that why can't we you know and any sort of uh reticence i might have felt i mean i didn't but if i had done any sort of why do why do we have to do that uh, immediately vanished because i thought what an idiot this guy is he's come all this way <laughs> sat through this amazing talk and uh now he's walking out, but really, I think he'd come there to walk out and you know, draw attention to himself. 
so he walked out and um some point during the meeting Shimatji looked at me uh although i was sort of hiding in the middle of the room and there were about there were quite a lot of people there about 80 or 100 it seemed a lot to me there were different rooms in caxton hall yes and uh some of them were smaller than others. It wasn't one of the very big rooms, but mm -hmm. it was quite large. And yeah, she looked at me and said, ah, an intellectual, you won't find the truth in books. And I heard myself saying, quite much to my surprise, you know, uh, yes, I know that, um, <laughs> Sri Mataji. And um, then I don't remember, she said, uh, she might have pointed out yeah, about my hair at that point. And then at the end, someone took me up and, as I said, she cricked my neck and she told me about this chap in uh, Bristol. And I was impressed also by um, mm -hmm. the sort of half dozen original uh, English Sahaj Yogis, plus people like Jamel and um, Gregoire, who were there. Uh, there was something to me at that time kind of clear cut about them, a clarity about them um, that I wasn't familiar with in my friends, other people. Uh, so that was impressive. It's worth worth saying that. I think. And one of the things that kept me going. Because in Bristol, of course, I didn't have anyone there. I said there was Alan Richards, but I met him quite a lot later. Sorry, what about the um, those those musician friends of yours? Did any one of them join you in any of the meetings? Are they still about? Um, they are. I, the girl who played violin, who shared our flat, um, she went on to have quite a successful career. She played on a famous piece of music, um, which was a big hit. And she wrote a memoir recently that... Uh, Another friend told me I should read. She says some nice things about us. So um, uh -huh. I've got around to it, yeah. Um, then she didn't come no. to the meetings. Which, no. But the band split up very shortly after this, and so we went our separate ways. Fair but enough. Steve was, uh, Steve Kirby was also living in the flat, um, and he came along uh, at the end of the year, I think, uh, in London at another Caxton Hall meeting. And um, so he came to Sarge Yoga and I was very pleased about that. He's a very great musician and very sensitive and uh, humorous man. <clears throat> so I still see him occasionally. He lives in America. I think he's maybe not uh, meditating at the moment, but his wife is and his daughter is and um, He's a lovely man. So he moved to America soon oh. after this to go to Berkeley, the jazz uh -huh. um, college there, uh, where he still teaches. So uh, the next thing before Ruth came along um, was I, I used to go up to Caxton Hall meetings whenever I could, whenever I could afford it, basically. And there were quite a lot in those days. So marvelous talks, I think. Uh, at that time, Sri Mataji was kind of pitching her um, introductions or her talks uh, more deeply in a more complex way. Um, and maybe later she felt, you know, I'm, this isn't getting through, or maybe she felt she'd said enough of these sort of fundamental things. But um, for the most part, those talks were amazing. Mm -hmm. And we had a couple of seminars. One was um, a place called East Hampstead Park. That was in October of 78. And then in December, um, there was one in a place in Sussex called Buxted. And I went to those. Uh, and they really helped me a lot. So it was more intimate in the sense that she actually was just talking to kind of people who had been coming for a while. She didn't have to introduce uh, the yoga. The Buxted seminar, um, I remember it was a very spooky kind of place. I think it might have been an old convent. Um, Where is Buxted, if I may ask? So it's somewhere in East Sussex, um, oh. near a place called Maresfield, I think. Right. Um, I'm not, yeah, I can't. I've got. Sure the enough, that's fine. 
somewhere, but yes, I remember somebody, I went to the train station, because I come all the way from Bristol, most yes. people were coming from London or Brighton, I was quite late, and um, a man who, a friendly stranger at the train station, uh, said he'd give me a lift, but for some reason he gave me a lift halfway, and then, I don't know why, he just dropped me in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I remember walking, it's dark, mm. very dark, um, down this quiet country road with all these woods around, feeling a, a very sort of spooky sensation about this place. Anyway, I, I remember Mother, when she arrived the next day, I think she was wearing black or a black cardigan. It was very unusual. To see. That is very unusual, yes. I just felt, you know, this is Mahakali uh, dealing with all this spookiness. Yeah. The place itself, you know. Sorry. So this is 1980 sometime, is it? Oh, 1978. This, this is, is 1978, the yeah. summer, I would imagine. December. Um, December, wow. Yeah, December. <clears throat> and, um, but again, I learned a lot at that meeting. She just uh, explained that England was the heart um, at this point. And I was very happy to know that. It felt, it really felt... Uh, I think it is true, but it felt true to yes, me. Yes, yes. Um, but I remember other people saying, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, and not sort of seeming to see what a, a kind of... Amazing a, thing. Yes, amazing thing that was. Yeah. Important to just sort of share with uh, everyone that where you are in Bristol is the Vishuddhi of... Uh... Yes, so later we heard, not at this time, but later, okay. um, Mother had said it was the Vishuddhi of the heart and this makes sense in that um, it, the North America was kind of discovered from the European point of view yes. from Bristol this was uh, the Italian sailor John Cabot right. Giovanni Cabotto mm -hmm. um, sailed <laughs> from Bristol as an Italian friend told uh -huh. me. He had no Certainly, idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's amazing because uh, Steve, your good friend, uh, Steve Kirby, and Alan Richards, his wife, Prerna, I'd met ages ago in Cabela. Um, I only remember because of the name, which was very easy to remember for me. And it means encouragement, motivation, Prerna. So, yeah, uh, and, and they are now in, in America, aren't they? So that's the Vishuddhi yeah. uh, yeah. of the world. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um... And other things about the vision here. Yeah. I mean, of course, there were a lot of the slave trade was yes. um, quite big here because it's on the coast. And um, balloons, we have a balloon festival and sort of, yeah, aeronautics. We have a lot of play, very playful things here. Puppetry, yeah. kites, balloons, graffiti. Um, Fantastic. I know the atmosphere there is very different uh, from maybe where we are in the southeast for example things yeah. are much more frenetic here everyone's just more in the rush to do things so in your uh, meditations obviously you were coming to Caxton or to a Caxton Hall or to seminar when you could uh, one would imagine you were sort of meditating as Srimataji and as the Sajogis had advised yeah so at, at what point did um what happened first? Did you meet Ruth first or did you uh, invite Shramataji first? And, and how did that happen? Please, uh, please share with us. Okay, so um, I will, I'll just lead up to that with a few more things. So uh, yeah. I remember, wait a minute, okay. So, <clears throat> Yes, Ruth must have moved in in 1979, quite early, and um, we gradually got to know each other because she moved into the flat below. No, we moved in 1978, November. All right, so yeah. the end of 78. <clears throat> and um, uh, to get to my flat upstairs, you had to go through her flat. Uh, it's a nice house, actually, very nice Georgian building in a part of Bristol called Montpellier. And... Um, so, you know, I, you can live above someone without ever meeting them, but because I had to go through her flat, um, we, we met gradually. Well, it was the corridor. We really had rooms, didn't we? Exactly, yeah. 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 And um, so we got talking and so on. And then, yes, you, 
Okay. Shall we ask Ruth to take it from here? Because yeah. uh, we're keen to hear what your journey was like and yes. how did you find it? So I moved in to the um, room below where Chris was living in 1978 and I was um, seeking very strongly. I mean, I think I have been seeking since I was a child, really, remembering how I felt about certain children's books and so on and the symbolism in them and how it really meant something yes. to me. You know, um, there were the George MacDonald books and, you know, there's very clearly a figure of the Holy Spirit yes. in them. And I just loved those books, you know, and, I'd re and I wanted to meet that lady, you know, and this was from when I was kind of 10 or, you know, really young. Yes. And um, so it was definitely deeply in me and I read Jung's Memories, Dreams and Reflections when I was 15 so I was really kind of looking for answers and when I just before I came I was kind of looking at all the religions and kind of trying to discover about them and so on and I always had a strong feeling for Jesus and you know um, so I was really quite in quite a tense and upset state when I came to Sahaja Yoga. I had very bad insomnia and it had been going on for two years. I mean, really bad, you know, like I'd not sleep for five nights and so on. And then I just crash out for a few hours and then it, this whole thing would start again. And I was kind of looking for a solution to that, but I went to this, so I was, you know, I was just looking at things that might help, but I knew that it wasn't just a physical, thing that I want you know just a healing that I wanted because I went remember going to this some um, natural health meeting in somewhere in the middle of Bristol and somebody was talking about health and how something could cure it I can't remember now but at the end all the people who had problems problems sort of went up to the front where the man was saying you know come and ask me about your problem and I just thought I can't do that I just that's not what I'm looking for. You know, I sort of knew, even though I wanted to be cured, that um, that wasn't what I was really looking for. And it somehow oh. seemed lower than what I was looking for. And uh, so also I'd been to the doctor and the doctor had said, well, maybe you should talk to someone about this, a psychiatrist or, or something. And he said, I'll make an appointment for you. Mm. But somehow I don't feel you're ever going to need it, he said. Quite oh, strange. Interesting. And it was in that month between the appointment to see a psychiatrist about my insomnia and um, that I that I found out about, that I got my realisation, actually, because um, I start, Chris and I started talking when I moved in and we found out that we both used the I Ching, you know, the I Ching? Yes, yes. Uh, in a very similar way, and we have the same copy, the same copy which right. had an introduction by Jung and so on. And oh. uh, so that was an immediate sort of connection. connection. Yeah. He, so he'd been telling all his friends about Saji Yoga and thinking they'd all be as interested as he was and finding it wasn't the case at all. And so he was quite, quite sort of, he didn't push it when he came to telling me. And, um, yeah. You know, I remember him telling me, you know, this, you know, about the Kundalini and it can um, put all your problems right. And not only that, but you can feel the problems of other people and can put those right as well. And I thought, well, if that's true, then what else is there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he told me that there was this lady and I would be able to talk to her about these things. And um I can't remember him showing me a picture of mother's photograph because I didn't know what she was going to look like. And mm. But he told me she was at Caxton Hall and I was sort of making all these clothes at that time, uh, my own creations. And although I wasn't sleeping, I was kind of forcing myself to mm. go up to London and take them around shops. And so I thought, I knew Chris had told me on a certain day she mattered she would be at Caxton Hall. So I sort of planned it. I thought, I'll go up to take these clothes. I won't tell Chris because I didn't want him to know what, you know, I wanted to make my own mind up. And uh, maybe I'll go and see her in the evening. So I all day I kind of trudged around the shops, very, very tired, obviously, 
probably hadn't slept for three or four days. Oh. And, literally. And um, at the end of the day, it was like, I thought, shall I go to that meeting or shall I go home? And I'm exhausted, you know. And suddenly it was just as if the train pulled up. It was almost like I was carried to the meeting. Quite strange, you know. No trouble getting there at all. And normally I'm quite, you know, with directions and things, I'm sort of, you know, get a bit lost. But I didn't. I just got straight there. And it was as if Mother had just picked me up and put me there. And when I came through the door, Felicity came up to me. Felicity had only been um, practicing Sard Yoga for about two or three months. And so this was in May? This was in May 1979, mm -hmm. yeah, on Ascension Day, interestingly. Amazing. Uh, Felicity came up to me. And she, um, mm -hmm. I, she sort of, I unloaded all these clothes on the back chairs at the back and she took me right up to the front and uh, was very keen to kind of get me right into the front of Shimoji. So I was in the front row, the middle of the front row, right in front of Shimoji. And then probably like when Chris came, there were probably 80, 80 maybe 100 people there, quite a lot. Not a huge number, but quite a lot. Probably more like 80. And then... Um, I remember it was only when I was sitting, waiting for Shumataji that this kind of incredible feeling of expectancy grew in me. And I thought, what, who are we waiting for? Who is this lady? Because I hadn't really, either Chris hadn't told me much about her or I hadn't really put my attention on that very much, that aspect very much. And I sort of was very ex sort of expectant and I can always remember suddenly everybody stood up and I turned to look because I I was interested and this quite she looked small mm. quite small lady walked in and she came to the front of you know how sometimes she looks much bigger and some, yes and she came and sat in the chair you know which was directly in front of me and she talked for about an hour and I mean all I can remember is how and I didn't, everything she said made sense. You know, it was like there was nothing that kind of, I thought, ooh. Um, and then at the end of her talking, she said, um, right, this isn't about uh, talking. It's about getting the experience. So put your hands towards me and shut your eyes. And I did that. And I felt my kundalini shoot up my back. It went on every chakra. It went boom. Boom, boom. I didn't know anything about it at all. So it was, and I thought, I knew obviously something big had happened. I was amazed, you know, I was just, and um, then I remember Douglas came and worked on me and I was very surprised because, I mean, he was very down to earth, which was probably the best kind of person I could have had, really very straightforward and and he said, oh, how's your mother? Which was interesting because a lot of my problems, my tension and some were related to my relationship with my mother, which wasn't <laughs> wasn't good. And um, he said, how's your mother? You know, and I was kind of, oh, you know, how, what makes you? And he said, I can read my, my um, fingers like a typewriter, he said. And I thought, Aww. gosh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was impressed with this. And... Um, <laughs> and I, I said about problems with my mother and he said, ah, put a flower in front of your mother's photograph every day, which was a very interesting idea, which I did. And it, I think it helped the sort of forgiveness aspect and sort of relating to the spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, so then mother never actually put her attention directly on me at that meeting, even though I'm probably the only person that actually stuck on from that that that. Uh, program I imagine um so she was dressed in white and it was a very biblical scene yes she came amongst everyone and there were there was a lo lot of people all crowding around her and I remember she was an incredibly motherly mood that night which was it you know exactly mm -hmm. what I needed you know yeah. so motherly and loving and there was um she was sorting out, I think it was Maria, the Greek 
Yogi and her relatives were there. And one of the relatives who she was translating to Shumataji for was talking about how her husband or someone had epilepsy and Shumataji sort of was very sweet to her and said, it's all right, he's all right now. And then uh, a little child wanted to bring Shumataji flower and she yeah. could reach um, Sri Mataji and then she she said bring her you know yes her and she picked her up in her arms and um, I just felt something very special and I had this feeling that I just wanted to touch any part of Sri Mataji spontaneous that I even like an edge of her sari but I was much too shy to push myself forward and do it but I really recognised mm. that I had that feeling and it's not a feeling I've ever had before. And so that that was significant. And uh, so that was it. I went home. I, I thought I'd never seen love like that before. And then I went home on the coach. I got back very, very late at night. And I did sleep that night. But for the first four nights... I had to have my light on because every time I shut my eyes, I saw horrible images of eyes just coming mm. at me. Right. And it took four nights for that to stop. And then I, and then maybe within a month, my sleep was back to normal. You know, just the insomnia had just vanished. Extraordinary. Amazing. And were you then if uh, meditating when you got back uh, immediately or did uh, it take time? Well, I think I started talking to Chris and you know then my questions started coming up how can it be how can I just have found it you yeah. know and it, it's, it's far too I, easy the rest of my life you know it just seemed impossible yeah yes so there was that sort of going on in my mind and just questioning and is this really you know is this really mm. inside I obviously I knew and the second thing I really noticed was that um a change in me a kind of shift in my awareness, I mean, wasn't anything that I could conscious, consciously do anything about, but I had never noticed that happen to me before, that a sense of um, being more of a witness, that I was not quite, because I mean, I'm, I am still am, I mean, I was an emotional person, but I was extremely emotional then, and I certainly wasn't a witness, but I noticed that the more that sense of being witness that I wasn't quite so in the kind of turmoil I was right standing back a little bit and I really saw that and I knew that was nothing I could do to make that happen it just it just happened and that was because of the meditation and then obviously we started meditating together and um, so it went from there yes yeah I mean that was one of the great days of my life when the next morning she came and told me how uh, you'd gone up yeah. to London. I mean, we were just friends then. He was yeah. just the guy in the flat upstairs. You yeah. know? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, talk next... to us about it, please. So, so Chris, <laughs> here you go. You were like pleasantly shocked, surprised that oh. you just mentioned and she's been unseen. She yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next morning I went up to his room and uh, I think he was in bed, actually. It was about 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> As, <laughs> as students probably do. What, were you a student at that point, Chris? I wasn't no. a student. I was, yeah, anyway. Yeah, sure. anyway, so I, um, he started, he loves cricket, and he started telling me all about, there was a big cricket match the day before, and with England, obviously, as one of the, <laughs> and um, he started telling me very excitedly all about this cricket match and um, all the details of it, and I just kind of listened, because I knew I had some big news, you know, Yes, I was enjoying it in a way. So we yeah. went on about this cricket for ages, and then in the end, I said, "He stopped," and I said, "I saw Sri Mataji yesterday," <laughs> <laughs> and he went, and he, he nearly jumped out of the, leapt out of the bed, and I said, "I'm going to do it." <laughs> he just couldn't believe it. It was like you know, after all this time, telling everybody about it, and yeah. no one, apart from Steve, but yeah, from Steve being uh, interested, he just couldn't believe that. I said, "I." I'm going to do it. And it more or less happened the same way when I when I told my brother about it as well, Alan, that, you know, one day I went, he was in Cheltenham at that time, 
went in the car with him from Bristol to Cheltenham and all the way there, which was about an hour, I, I just went on and on about Sahaja Yoga and so on and Sri Mataji and who she was. And at the end of the trip, we went into a pub, I think it was, he wanted to have a drink and, and um, he said, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Oh, you're knowing Alan, he's just <laughs> great, isn't he? Amazing. Yes, I'll do that. <laughs> you both knew immediately that that was, that was it. Yeah. Found it. So I've... was this May in, again, May 79? When this, this... Yeah. Well, yeah. which is... This, when you this came... told Chris and then this journey with Alan. This oh, was later on, that was, that was about six months later, I think, the Alan oh, okay. journey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it was just the way she said, I'm going to do this. I, I just yeah. felt, you know, because obviously I've been to lots of meetings with people who you never saw again, um, but I felt this was real. And, uh, yeah, I was so happy. And it was a big thing. I mean, so at that point, we had three people meditating in the, in the house. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's funny, three people separately all came to live in the same house. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so... Later, I mean, I just remember a couple of things in 79. Um, in October, I was in London. It must have been a meeting in the evening, Caxton Hall again. And um, But for some reason, we'd gone round to, I didn't, I didn't think you were there, it's just me, um, to her flat in Ashley Gardens, which was by Westminster Cathedral. And I just remember we all lay on the floor while uh, Srimati was... Um, dealing with a French boy who was asking her a question about should he or should somebody do something, I didn't know. And um, she w decided to go into the subconscious and look into this. And so she lay down, we all lay on the floor, and um, she just immediately went to sleep and sort of slept for, I don't know how long it was, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then she came back out of it and gave the boy his answer. You know, it's just going into the subconscious to look into something. Um, yeah, it's quite yes. interesting. Amazing. Yes, it's quite surreal. So just, later, yeah, trying. Sorry. later in uh, November, we had our first meeting and first public meeting in Bristol. And um, I introduced it, but very uncertainly. And uh, Gavin Brown, who was sort of one of the original people, who was Alan Richards's uncle, I think. Right. Um, that was how Alan had come, Alan Richards. And uh, he came down and sort of in, gave a proper introduction. And uh, we had a few people, I mean, you know, 10 or 12 people, probably new people. Um, and then we went on from there and one evening he couldn't come and I had to give the whole talk and I remember it sort of it's kind of choking yeah. but somehow the words got through and and that was the start easy. and yeah. then I yeah I was all right after that mm. um so in 1980 um in May there was another of these seminars uh, this was old Arlesford place oh yes uh in Hampshire and that was a a great step forward Again, I felt um, Mother gave some beautiful deep talks there. And uh, I don't think, yeah, Ruth. No, I wasn't there. Wasn't no. there. It was just me. Um, and on the way home, I just remember an experience. I must have been, I had to change trains, but I think it was in Winchester train station waiting for the connection. I just this feeling of real bliss, which one doesn't, often or I don't often feel mm. that absolute sense of being beyond all the yes. material um, worries, concerns. I mean, I used to have a lot of money worries and so on. Uh, but just beyond them, absolutely in sort of the heavenly world. Um, and that was a beautiful feeling. And one needs these feelings from time to time to keep you going, I think. Absolutely reassuring, isn't it? Yeah. And that you're on the right track as well. Yeah. And that, um, I mean, I'll just say one more thing before Ruth comes back in. So I was going all this time to as many talks as I could, because I just love to hear Mother talk. I mean, yes. the 
I suppose I needed that intellectual food, but also mother's talks were so interesting. They weren't what I was used to at all from lecturers because she would, they were more like pieces of music. You know, they would take a, like a rock, I suppose. They would take um, a theme and they would work on it going here and there and building up to something and you're not quite sure the path it's taking and then it all comes back to the beginning again and sometimes she would uh, go into quite critical mood and then almost always come back to something very positive giving mm. a feeling um, that it's all right mm -hmm. uh, at the end so I, I just love to hear her talking and <clears throat> in the summer of 1980 around then she was giving some really powerful talks and one i particularly wanted to mention was um the 30th of june that year so 1980 uh, at capstone hall it was one about other locus other dimensions which yeah. was a very unusual talk i don't think there's anything else quite like it um and quite short talk but so powerful and again i just felt uh just a sublime feeling what is it that mother said that that struck a chord with you? Because that is something that... Yeah, so she was talking about, she starts off something like, T today I have a mind to tell you about what is happening in other locus, other dimensions which we don't see. Mm. Um, there is a great war going on between the evil forces and um, the forces of God. Right. Uh, uh, yes, that sense of this great war is uh, has always been very kind of real to me and interesting to me. I mean, others, I'm sure others draw mm. different themes of this yoga, which is so multifarious, you know, um, that are more uh, kind of resonant with them. But to that, to me, I don't know if my father was a soldier, um, maybe that's something to do with that. I was always interested in reading about um, mm. wars and so on. Um, so I wouldn't say I'm a bloodthirsty person, but that sense that there is this war of sort of good and evil going on, um, not just in, in this world that we can see where it's also confused, but also in the unconscious world. This was always very real to me. And so, it's so pertinent even today, isn't it? Please remind us the talk. Uh, it's in 1984. When was that? So this was uh, the 30th of June, 1980. Okay. 1980, okay, great. 30th of June, 1980, thank you. But there were so many other talks. I mean, around that time, you went to a meeting, I couldn't go there, in Kingston on Thames. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Which is another wonderful mm. talk. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was. Again, really powerful. Where mm. Mark has been really passionate about this, yes. this yoga. This is our chance. This has to be done. Yes. The whole world. Yes. Um, so in July that year, 1980, this was the first time Sri Mataji came uh, to Bristol <clears throat> for a meeting. I mean, she probably passed through it earlier because uh, at some point there are photographs of her in Bath and um, there was also a seminar before I came along, um, maybe in 76, down in Western Supermare. So... Right. Possibly she had passed through Bristol, but the first uh, public program she came to was in July 1980 uh, in Bristol. And, um, want to talk about that, too? And the first one, was yeah. that the one? Where... That's the folk house. And... I think that's the one where I'd made the cushion, isn't it? Probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yes, I'm sure it was. Yeah. I don't know who arranged for Shumatiji to stay in our house, but um, somehow that happened. And so we suddenly found we were we were going to have Shumatiji coming to stay, which was a big thing. With about half a dozen years. Yeah. Is this the same flat that you were staying uh, in? Upstairs, so downstairs, Dave? We had two flats, basically. I yeah. mean, Ruth, uh, who was sharing with a, a woman friend who was not really a she wasn't a friend she was just the person who was in yeah. the flat when i yes. i got on all right with her but yeah yeah yes. but, i mean she <laughs> she was a 
a nice person, but not really a seeker. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. And then I sh was sharing at that point. Steve. Yes, with Steve and Kate. Kate, yeah. Kate yeah. Who was also a, a kind of seeker. Yeah, she um, did come to see Shuma. Yeah, yeah. Nice person. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, we had two flats yeah. we could use. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think it was this time that I had, uh, I knew she was coming and I wanted to give her a present. And so I had been collecting kind of bits of antique <clears throat> fabric mm -hmm. and I made a, a sort of special patchwork cushion out of them. And um, at the intersections, there were covered buttons. And anyway, she matched, she was, she stayed in my room, my room downstairs. And um, everyone was sitting around and she was sitting on the bed. I remember. And um, well, as I'm talking, other other stories are coming into my head, but I'll try and stick to this one. Um, and so at some point I shyly said, I've made a present for you, Sri Majesty. Can I give it to you? And then she just laughed and she said, look at her. She asks if she can give me a present. <laughs> and she said, of course you can. And so I went but, over and I gave the the this cushion, and uh, she she was saying very nice things about it. What a beautiful feeling it had to it. Somehow this has got a very good feeling to it. She said, and uh, and then she um gave me a a kiss. She gave me a hug and a kiss. And I went, then I went back across the room and sat down. And she said, "Come here, I want to kiss you again." <laughs> <laughs> and so I went back and she kissed me again. Lucky you. I know, I know. But so motherly, you see. Yes. Incredible. And um, so that was amazing. And what was the other thing I was, what was the other story that came into my mind when I was in the middle of that? Um, whether it was... Matt well, was... I can talk about... Um, yeah. You, you remember it. But um, yeah, we so we had the meeting, public meeting, and then mother said, to the new people, do come and visit the flat while I'm in Bristol. And um, so a few people came around the next day. And, uh, you know, it's just fascinating to see mother going into each person, talking to mm -hmm. them in ways they could understand. I mean, there was one youngish man there. I never saw him again, but he was quite special. He had been to India. He knew a lot about um yogis and swamis and this and that and so on and she managed to seem to be um yeah was talking to him about things and when he went she said um uh, he'll be all right something like that david's looking after him and i thought who is this david i mean i assumed it was in my mind that she meant the biblical david mm. um, is looking after him because there weren't any other Davids that it could have referred to at that point. Um, so maybe that was so, I don't know. And there was that girl who had, she came from the road at the bottom of our road, a young girl, and she had these bruises oh, on that her was arm. The next year. That was, that was the, the next year. year. Yeah. So, Not David Spiro? No. No, because he wouldn't have known him. It was just someone coming in Bristol. Was, yeah. No, no, he was just in Bristol. Okay, fair, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, there was uh, another young chap, I remember mother saying to him, um, you know, this marijuana, this cannabis is satanic. Yes. Uh, so that was very strong. I remember saying this to a yogi not so long ago, and he was very surprised. <laughs> I mean, I would have thought it was blindingly obvious, but anyway. Um, yeah, gosh, that is amazing, <laughs> isn't it? How things things change with time. Um, uh, you know, it was a powerful. Yeah, she meant. Was that the time that man who talked about Madame Blavatsky? I always remember that. Oh right, yeah. I think that was this year, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that was that year. So yeah. we had this uh, guy who was a Czech. Um, I was curious actually because he was friends with. Uh, I'd been to Durham University years before, and in the basement below us was a Czech uh, guy who used to play piano very romantically, I remember. He sort of had these fits where he'd go into a very Polish mood and play the piano, but he was nice. And um, 
this chap who came to our meeting in Bristol happened to know him, so it's a small world. I wonder if he told him about Sahaj Yoga, but he didn't, um, he didn't follow it up, unfortunately. I'm not very much. She might as well tell me later. Try and get in touch with that chap, Peter, and see, um, you know, tell him to the madam will come back along. You. Yeah, he, <laughs> he just happened to say, Oh, she matters reminded him of your eyes remind me of Madame Blavatsky, and she said, Forget Madame <laughs> Blavatsky, <laughs> <laughs> who, who was a sort of bootish guru yeah. of the 1920s or something mm. around there. Um, um, yeah, and then there was another chap who came along <clears throat> that time who, um, can considered himself a healer. I mean, he, he was very ne in need of healing, I would say. And he um, called himself me, you know, I'm just me. So oh, well, he didn't name. have a name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Very confusing, you know, so who am I if you're me? Um, <laughs> but, uh, when he went, I mean, he was a, a nice man. He didn't cause any trouble or anything. Um, but Sri Mataji pointed to, do you remember that bit? Yeah, yeah, to a cushion where he'd been sitting and said... Not the cushion, Ruth. No, <laughs> no, nothing to do with my cushion. No. Um, said, if if you could all see the entities that are sitting on that cushion now, everyone would come rushing to Sahaja Yoga, she said. Right. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And we all looked at that cushion. We are all looking. Thought, I think we threw it out after well, I'm sure we did, yeah. <laughs> the right thing to do, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Um, now there's some photos that you emailed. Um, shall I share one of them on on um, on here? See if this is about the time um, when when so, you. Uh, this is the time when Shrimataji visited yeah. in Bristol, and you both in there. So um, that's right. So this is outside our house, and um... yeah. Is that, yeah. that's Pamela, that's Pamela Bromley. Bromley's son, Matthew. Oh, is it Matthew? Oh, he's the one who said, yes, uh, God's staying in my house. There yeah. is a teacher, that story. Yeah, okay, go on. Sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I just took this photo. It's not a very good photo, but there were a couple of photos of Mother. She was looking very small again, very simple. Yeah. And um, that was the net following year. So maybe come to that in a minute, this, this other one. Um, the same one yeah it's just the first photo was that first year this yes one. and yeah just before this actually there had come up the the road from behind her um mm -hmm. this real punk with sort of uh you know screws through his face and um brightly colored hair and probably in a mohican and so on young chat are you ever smiling you know you had a he wasn't sort of smashing bottles in people's faces or anything. But um, and I almost, it was on the tip of my finger to take a photograph of them, of him as he was passing through Mataji and sort of heaven and hell, you know. But I didn't yeah. do it. I felt, no, no, that's not right. It's not right to make a kind of work of art out of this. This is divine. Right. Uh, so I let him go past, which he did, smiling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was that. So, um, yeah, that was that. that I guess some thought about mm -hmm. that thing. Yeah. Oh, maybe we better not dot, dot about. Um, also in the evenings when Shumataji came, yeah, she would be working on the yogis, and you know, I can remember her having her foot on my stomach. I think it was, and you know, she would be working very hard on mm -hmm. us. Yes. Yes, oh. and it's just so sort of nice how Shumataji just come in this car with the scarf and a lovely coat must have been very cool go out to the meeting um yeah. she was picking her sari and she had her suitcase open and she was saying what what sari shall i wear I, you know she picked a purple one up right right a strong regal color and she said mm. maybe this is a bit too strong frighten them she said <laughs> and so she picked her i think it was a white um, a green pattern on it and um so she was doing making this little play of choosing a sari and she then she looked up sort of 
mm. mischievously and said, who would be a woman, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing, she wants to shake off. Um, yeah, I mean, it was an amazing time and feeling that intimacy, yeah. And she gave um, yeah. that turn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So oh, wow. This is an elephant bell, and when she arrived at our house, she did a kind of mire of pretending to think that Chris and I were married. And so she presented this bell to us as a couple and <laughs> I had to say, we're not married, mother, you know. Um, so then she said, well, which of you is going to have this? And I said, I will, because I really liked it. <laughs> and, and she said to someone else, go and to the boot of the car and get another present for, for Christopher. Can so, you ring that elephant bell, please, and show us again? Amazing. It's very, it's got... Um, it's got carving, it's a brass... It's very small, intricate carving oh, for it and on the top. Yes, beautiful. Um, she she said to me, this would have had, uh, would have all been enameled when it was initially yes. made. So I think it's quite an old, old one. Beautiful. beautiful. Especially your interest with vintage and antique. I loved it immediately. Yeah. You it's know, amazing. I, I didn't want him to have it. Oh. I, I haven't seen anything like this before and I'm from India. So <laughs> this is how rare and beautiful it is. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. You get the small ones, but they're not they're not. Mm. No, mm. not that intricate and beautiful. But yes, so at that point, obviously, although you were friends and meditating together, uh, it didn't come in your attention that maybe you should get married or anything like that? Um well, it came in my attention, but right. he's pretty much a confirmed bachelor and very quite resistant to actually um, committing to anybody. Right. And I think that, you know, maybe if she actually hadn't come on the scene, he never would have, I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, she, um, the first time she came, she talked about this, you know, um, yes. and... Uh, she said, and the reasons why it hasn't wasn't working out and so on. And she said, I I don't worry, I'll look after it or something. And uh, so on that whole year till the next time she came, it was kind of hanging in the air. But um, the second time she came. So this was in yeah. August in 1981. Yeah. Right. So we move on a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then <clears throat> the next time she came, she, um, I was working in a place called the Pump House. It was just kind of like a restaurant bar. Mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. I was cooking, and so I had to go off on one of the days to do my job. And in that day, she Mataji talked to to Chris about marrying me, and um, so I had a phone call at work saying will you marry me <laughs> I was very surprised and I just said yes <laughs> get back to cooking <laughs> yes. well, and then she she said come and come and see me off at the station didn't she before she went yeah. when I went to work she said come and see me off at the station and I said I'm I don't know if I can get away mother and she said don't worry just tell them you've got to got to go and see your mother and the extraordinary thing was that when it came to the time to go, there was no one around to ask. And I just walked out, just walked out and went went to um Temple Meads to, um, yeah, to the station to see Shumatiji off. And no one ever mentioned it. No one ever said, where were you? Where, you disappeared. And, um, I, so, yeah. um, and then obviously I saw Mother. And, um, yeah. She was so how long did she stay for when the first time she came and there was a program public program in well, that well it was probably a couple of Two months nights, I, I think, could think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in 81 probably the same, same. Okay. yeah Did i mean go on. Yeah, she talked to me about yes i uh, getting married to ruth and just just me and her in the room um, what did what did she talk to you if it if if you'd like to share 
um, just for people yeah. who aren't very sort of uh, sure of. Well, she asked me about myself. I mean, I, you know, I was very lucky to have this kind of special treatment that I'd been introduced to Ruth. You know, she'd moved in. I got to know her. Yes. Uh, in fact, we had a mutual friend, so we could have met earlier in our lives. It's quite but... strange. We were invited to the same wedding when we were about 22 or yeah. 21, 22. I was the best man. Yeah. You were supposed to be yeah. there. Yeah, it was pretty strange, that, because he was up in Durham at university, and this was a friend I had at school, and she met this chap who was who knew Chris. So it was, yeah, it was oh. quite strange. Yeah, but we didn't meet then. So, um, but anyway, yes, so... Mother sort of asked me about myself, I think, and about uh, my parents with, who were long dead. Um, and I never really knew my mother, which was, she died when I was a baby, more or less, an infant. And uh, I think, you know, that was one of the reasons probably why I was never quite sure, you know, I hadn't had the immediate experience mm. of having a mother. So I was always, um, quite diffident with Sri Mataji, I would say. I mean, sometimes her Maya could really bring out the sort of more playful side around her. But at other times, I was, yeah, quite diffident. And, um, but also, I was always felt a, a kind of awe from the first time I saw her at Caxton Hall. Um, I was very aware of that, that this is not an ordinary mm. person. She's a Mahamaya, but not ordinary at all. And, it, you know, I was often very surprised at how um, people could behave around her, it, you know, as if they were completely befooled yes. by that. Mm. It's quite odd. And some people would always be in the front, you know, and so on. Mm. Um, but... Yes, so she told me I, I should, um, it would be good to get married to Ruth. And she said some very <laughs> nice things about her. I don't know if I should share them, but how she was very unusual for um, someone in the West. You know, um, she hadn't met anyone else like Ruth, who, who had that sort of feeling quality in the West. Hmm. Women. And um, I mean, that's what she said. It's so, kind of, generally. sorry, it kind of reminds me of, you know, the talk Shri gives to the brides and to the grooms before the Sahaj uh, marriages, like she did to ours when Shankarji and I, she married us um, in Kabbalah way back. But it's like, you know, you had a one-to-one -one session with yeah. Shri <laughs> Yes, and um, she said... You know, she's like, uh, she says she's like Princess Diana, who was about to be married in a few days' time at that point. So and that's 85 then, isn't it? 81. 81, day. sorry, yeah. yeah okay. Almost the same time we got married. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was quite, I wasn't that interested in the royal wedding, but I was sort of interested and, in fact, watched it. And um, maybe it just happened. It's possible. Yes, because at the time it I was... a few days before, yeah, I think. I yeah. was blissfully unaware that I was about to get married. And I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was four days later, wasn't it? Because yeah. Sri Mataji arranged it all and then Chris said, had obviously agreed to it, and then he said, oh, when will that be, Sri Mataji? Thinking you'd have another year at least to think no. about it. And then he, he said, on Sunday, <laughs> which was four days from them, you know, because it just happened. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sixteen weddings happening at Chelsham Road on um oh, the ninth ninth of August yeah. in nineteen eighty one, and uh, for the Bishudi, you know, because and she come, she came straight from Bristol to this um, to Back these to weddings, yeah. yeah. And uh, you you've well, sent some she... photos, haven't you? Let's share them, shall we? And then so well, she. I just finished. Um, well, yeah. then said uh she's like princess diana and she obviously because i wasn't a wild fan of princess diana and yeah. um she obviously sensed 
that, you know, from not mm. from anything I said, but so she said, or maybe more like Juliet in Romeo and Juliet and so on. <laughs> <laughs> she been oh. her, and, and you know, there she won me over. So um <laughs> she um, had been talking about Shakespeare. She quoted um yes. uh <clears throat> There is a tide in the affairs of men, you know, which taken at the flood leads on to fortune. And um Again, I, you know, she knew, I think, that sort of an appeal through English poetry would, <laughs> would mm. spot with me. She said, you know, I, I was a bit like Shakespeare, that he had spent a long time sitting on a mountaintop. Very interesting. Right. Before he became Shakespeare. Uh-huh. Um, she said she preferred, I mean, obviously she respected him, Um she preferred Blake because of Blake's heart, his concern for others. But, you know, it, it wasn't a put down of Shakespeare. If I remember, Blake uh, is an incarnation of St. Michael. Yeah. yeah. Of Byron. Um, Bereva, and uh, Shakespeare is a realized soul. Is that right? Yeah. She called him an avaduta. I mean, avaduta. Which I okay. him really high. Yes, yes, very much. Yes, this disciple principle, isn't he? Yes, he could have been. Yeah, yeah. one of the disciple principles. Uh, yes. uh, he is an amazing. Yeah, <laughs> no absolutely nice. amazing. Yes. Um, so, in a way, I suppose I felt flattered that any sort of comparison, even if it was one of us sitting too long on a mountain top, <laughs> Shakespeare was, was nice. And she said, you know, I had had some nice lives and. Um, she said, actually, Ruth hadn't, and that's why she's so pure. Mm. So, um, she didn't say all my lives have been nice. No, no, no. I've had a couple of difficult mm. ones or something. But <laughs> she said, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know. How Let's can... say again, I, we didn't get that. Um, yeah, she said, she implied that Ruth had had some lives that were difficult, and right. this was why she was so pure. Uh, whereas I had had some nice lives, but you know, lives are all difficult, aren't they? Oh, um, yeah. But some are nicer than others, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I and uh, I said this is definitely the right thing to do, Mother, and she kind of looked into the distance and said, "Yes, I think you're very fortunate." So, yes. Yeah, so I said, "Right, let's get married." Um, and it went on from there. And, you know, we had the marriages at Chelsham Road. And if you listen to the talk from there, she's she sort of mentions people who want six months to think about it. <laughs> 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 oh, oh my gosh, yeah. Um, yeah. It was lovely. I mean, it was an amazingly, uh, an amazing experience, you know, because it was just in the back garden of Chelsham Road. It's so, yeah. yeah, the... In August, August the 9th. And 9th August, all right. They'd had a, they brought a priest in um, who was not a yogi, but he he knew the kind of ropes of an Indian wedding and he was um, kind of overseeing. Well, mother he was, was conducting. Yeah, he was. Mother was overseeing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So there she matches us. Um, and this is Olympia. Yeah. Gavin oh, Brown. And she matches you just saying, Hi. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I mean, this is the goddess with a hand giving blessings yeah. to yeah. a new couple. And the other, there were 16 weddings there, was it? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and Gavin was there. Uh huh. On the left. And she said to him, This really pleases me, doesn't she? Yeah. This marriage Constantly. really pleases me. Yeah. yeah. So there we are again, bowing to yeah. the mother. It's such a lovely photograph of Shramataji. We have. We haven't seen this before, actually. It's beautiful, amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, she was very, there, very yeah. happy there. Yeah, mm. and that's Olympia again. Matthew Bromley, nice. yeah, boy, who was uh, son of one of the yogis. It's lovely ornaments that Shamataji is wearing, Ruth, isn't? Isn't she yeah. really beautiful? And uh, would you like to talk? To us about the presence because it's such a small wedding of sixteen couples and Shramataji always used to take care of the smallest of things. Would you like to share with us some details? Yeah. And 
he gave all the brides a, a sari. And um, I remember her saying, this one's for a blonde. And then she said, you can have it, Ruth. And I, I was thinking, I'm not really blonde, but obviously. <laughs> was. Um, but she, yeah, so she gave me a, a nice patterned light, light silk sari. And we had a, a candlestick, I remember. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. You had a candlestick. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And yeah, if you go back to the other photos from um, York Road, I'll just talk a little bit about them. You showed them briefly, but. They yeah, were... OK, just one moment. I'll get that. Yeah. So York Road, again, that's Bristol. Yes, so this is uh, in mm -hmm. Montpellier in Bristol, and uh, it's near, more or less near the centre. This is, um, again, I think at a time when people have been coming in to see her, the, the woman that you were sharing a flat with downstairs had come in, and this girl that you were talking about who lived down the road with, with the bruises. With the bruises. Uh, the yeah. boyfriend had given, and mother was very concerned indeed about that, I remember. Yeah. She was saying, oh, Poor thing, you know. I remember her touching her arm. Yeah. Mm. Like, how did he do this to you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And um, but we never saw her again. Mm. They were some sort of. They had some kind of spiritual thing going, but it was obviously not working. <laughs> not working <laughs> in the right direction. And um, so, did you arrange for like a special chair, sofa for Shimatuji, or does one um, of those things you decorated? What happened? Yeah. We just—it was so humble. We had no idea mm. how to, you know, we we didn't have the means for a start, but also we just things were very humble in those days. It hadn't yes. built up to the way you treat, you know, the yes. goddess and everything yeah. has to be beautiful and perfect. We did our best with the limited. Mm. This yeah, was we had at our means. Um, this was in my room above Ruth's, and mm -hmm. it's a very nice flat. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, and with a yeah. big view to the side of Mother. Um, it's a nice fireplace with plants, and I mean, yeah. I, to have Shamataji's photo, that shawl is absolutely amazing. But to have Shamataji in a sari like that, it's not really your everyday photograph, isn't it? It's like I see. That's the sari that I was saying when she picked one to go to the meeting, and it was white with. Yes, green flowers. Was, well, this is the same sorry which you go to the meeting. Was Amazing. I, was yeah. I imagining that? But yeah. oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so she'd just been looking at um on the LPs in the back, there's a right. book open on the top of them. And that was a book of Blake. I think it might be in another of the photos. Um not that one, but there she is looking very so Here she's looking at the Blake. There's a catalogue to an exhibition of Blake at uh, in London, and someone had shown it to her, and she was very pleased and commenting on some of the pictures and so on. But you can yeah. see her from moment to moment, her mood was lovely, very jolly. In the previous one, yes. she was being very thoughtful mm. and com contemplative. Amazing. So, another thing was, um, yeah, just mentioned. So after I'd agreed to get married and so on, and looked out the window and there were these clouds in the sky that were just like exclamation marks mm. it was extraordinary you know Amazing. Really felt, yes. you know just yeah i was sort of in sync with <laughs> with everything <laughs> yeah celebrations celestial and everywhere wow yeah so later that year um mother had bought the brompton square a flat a house in London and we went out with a lot of people who were working there and um, she sort of talked to us a bit and yeah. said I mean she gave me you were talking about advice she told me to um, actually that that was earlier at the when she was telling me to get married was to reveal myself to her more to trust to trust other people, not just Primatiji. Yeah. And um, she gave me for that the Vishnu Granti Vibhedini mantra. Oh, um, Vishnu Granti Vibhedini. Yeah, she said this is good for trust. Oh, wow. So 
And when she was, we were working at Brompton Square. I mean, I'm not very good at DIY, as Ruth will tell you. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we were working away. But she said, um, don't be afraid of making mistakes. You know, this was something I was definitely always been yeah. um, very much disliking the idea of making mistakes. But of course, that can prevent you from doing anything. So, um, yeah, she was very sort of, positive about that don't be afraid of making mistakes and uh, i remember yeah. <clears throat> one day we went there and she said to me have you been arguing or something and she put her her uh Argue. oh wow <laughs> on my argue and twisting it um, oh. and she said you know and i said yes we have been arguing. <laughs> and she said, um go and tell him you love him very much so wow. so i went and found him and i said mother said I love, you. I love you very much. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's such a all. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, there's some lovely things oh. happened in Brompton Square. When, when I, Janet Ridley, do you remember when she came to Brompton Square? She's, she's a lovely lady I don't think she comes very much now but she's a very special person and um she came and we kind of greeted each other in the doorway and she must she was watching us there was no one else there I think she must she was sitting in a chair and um she was just watching me and Janet and and she said it's later on she said it's so lovely I was enjoying you greeting each other so much it was so lovely to to see see that yeah um, yeah it's that theme that you know what makes mother happy is to seeing her children mm, mm. interacting happily with mm. each other and yeah. yes that's, that's about five and she was watching us. <laughs> this is what she has said isn't it it's how we love mother is how she wants to see us loving each other or, yeah. and how we love each other is how we love Mother. Uh, yeah. that's it that's yeah. it it's, it's all easier said than done though uh, many a times we forget don't we? The story I wanted to yeah. tell was that one when we went to London it was in 1980 yeah and we were going to a meeting at Chelsham Road and on the way we stopped to pick someone up oh the crop in, yes yeah. and uh it's 81 it 81 yeah. okay um so I think so we just we got married the, yeah, yeah and we were on the way to the meeting and uh so while we were there waiting for this woman to get ready, it was some National Geographics and I started leaping through them and I came to these photographs of a mother crocodile with her mouth open and she carries all the baby crocodiles in her in her mouth. And um, I sh it was amazing. And I showed it to Chris and he said, oh, that's disgusting. And I said, oh, I... <laughs> it's so difficult. Like, and the crocodiles, really. Yeah, lovely. but they are horrible, really. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. and, and I said, I don't know. It's quite sweet, really, because it was she was carrying her baby yeah. in her mouth. And then when we went to the meeting, she she gave her talk, and halfway through she said, I mean, see how the mother crocodile carries the baby crocodiles in her <laughs> mouth. And I went, <laughs> I was literally jumped, because it was, we just had this. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that was... Just showing you that all the time she can see what you're yeah, what, yeah, what you're up to. Yeah. And, and she was watching us approaching. Absolutely. Gosh. Gosh, that's amazing. Okay, shall we take a little break now? No. And then we regroup. So I'm going to stop this. Thank you so much for uh telling us about how you got your realizations so far and then Shamataji visiting you and then your marriages which is amazing and the photographs that we learned about so we'll talk about um the other experiences in a short while okay so thank you so much we come back? come back we very shortly i'll stop recording it for now and then we'll talk okay about half an hour or